first morning out in South Dakota. So the way uh, this works is we were supposed to get a tag. I sent, they forgot to send the tag, so we got to go on the fishing game and pick it up. But um, so this morning we're just like, well, let's not waste the morning. Let's go glass and try to figure something out. And I uh, came into this little, I'm going to call it a holla, holler. You said holla. Holla, holla, like holla. back girl. Holla with my ballas. <laughs> So old, the old holler, holler. <laughs> anyway, it's a little ravine, but we're like, let's set some trail cams, even though we only have four days to hunt. A short one picture can change a whole hunt, and let's so we we're here. coming in here glassing. What did we see? We saw a quadratorn. It's a one horn, four point, five point. I don't even know. What did you call it? A quadratorn. We saw a mature buck. A unicorn. <laughs> saw a mature buck chasing a doe. So the weather's been like. Two weeks ago, I know some guys that are out here archery hunting. It was super warm, like 70 degrees, really slow. You know, whitetail, what we've heard is kind of the last couple days of October, first couple days of November is really when things started kicking off, but it was warm. And so they didn't have much luck. And, but as of the last like seven, eight days, temps have skyrocketed down, plummeted. Uh, it was been super stormy the last two days. Yesterday it was gusts up to 55 miles an hour. Crazy. A little bit of snow, so like we tried to glass on our way in last night, and there was just no deer out moving. And I would assume like most big game animals, they were down in the haulers, down getting out of the wind. Haulers. Anyway, today is perfect. It's about six degrees right now, clear skies. It's supposed to be similar to this for the next four days. So we just like let's go glass, try to find like a pinch point maybe. And uh, that buck chases still right down through this uh, hauler. Anyway, and so we're like came down here there's a couple trails that meet so we we're gonna set a stealth cam and uh just let it be and uh maybe come back in a day and see what's coming cruising through here but we're gonna keep glassing all, all the way down to the fish game office get gauge a tag and then hopefully we have a plan by then but guys we're white tail hunting white tail hunting dudes white guys high five ready What'd you say um, to me? Is there room in your Jeep for Keith? Yeah. Okay. Keith can roll. Mine's P's and Q's. Who's Keith? Brando. Guys, look at it. You ever want to take me on a hunting trip? Look at I did. I made Logan a breakfast sandwich. Here you go, Logan. I woke up in the morning hand tossed the biscuits, rolled them first, and then hand tossed them. Pretty much made them from scratch. Ham from a, the pet pig we killed last night. Guys, welcome back to a Hush Life vlog. Look at what we're doing. We're in an, we're in an RV. Clark. Hey, but don't go fall in love with it, because that's going home with me. I'm gonna name the movie. Can you guys name it? Uh, we're on the next adventure. Uh, we're out here with our good buddies uh, from Hooked Hunting. If you've never watched Hooked Hunting, go and subscribe to their channel right now. Mr. Ken Byers, uh, I've known him for probably three or four years now, one of the coolest dudes I've ever met. But uh, dude, he runs a couple of really fun camps. This is where we come turkey hunting every year, and now uh, we're out here on a white tail, white tail slash mule deer hunt. So come along with us, and uh, like I said, welcome back to the vlog. These uh, cheapy knee pads that they got, the Velcro in the back. Yep. I just cut the ears off of it, and the double knee I cut in be on inside. Wait. Well, you guys, we're doing vlog stuff. So we came out here um, yesterday morning and actually set this stealth cam up um, in a pretty cool pinch point, we call it. The buck had been running around in here, and um, but we're just gonna come and snag this thing. We're trying to figure out the over-under on if there's any deer on it, in case he's pulling it right now. I'm gonna be on it. We had seen a buck, a mature buck, chasing a doe up here. He only had one horn, he was broke off on his other side but it's like open field and then there's a little holla as I call it and uh, it's just a good spot you know white tail stuff so it's been up for just over 24 hours maybe there's a deer maybe not but it was on video mode so if there is we'll put that clip here hey as you can see we're back from South Dakota what an absolute amazing adventure I cannot wait to share this video with you one of my favorite hunts of the whole year Gage's first whitetail hunt I don't want to give away too much but it just went down exactly how we hoped it was going to go down it was short-lived to say the least but what a cool way to shoot your first whitetail what a cool 
hunt to South Dakota with my son. Anyway, real quick before we leave, guys, I wanted to tell you right now, if you haven't heard, if you've been living under a rock, because we've been talking about this for the last week, First Light is having its biggest sale ever. Ever, ever, ever in the history of First Light, they're having the biggest sale right now. Now until November 28th, you can save up to 40% off some of our favorite pieces. But I wanted to show you real quick, since it's, it is late season, it is cold out, snow on the ground, I wanna show you four pieces that I would consider a staple in my late season kit. So this right here is the men's furnace quarter zip. Uh, First Light, you know, if you guys have ever worn First Light or looked into First Light, First Light is big in a layering system. That's what it is, it's a layering system. They started with Merino way back in the day. They've expanded to outerwear, obviously, but it's still a layering system. Late season, this is my go-to piece. This is the first thing I put on this hairy chest of mine is the furnace quarter zip. This is great because it will keep you warm, obviously. Um, it's, I only, you know, I kind of run hot, so I really only need one piece of layering when it's cold outside, and this is it. It's a heavier fabric, heavier merino wool, but this is the first thing that I put on. Along with this, accompanied the furnace quarter zip is the men's furnace long johns. Same material, same merino wool. These go on the bottom, and again, this is only layer I'll wear underneath the pair of pants that uh, I decided to wear. I like the Catalyst soft shell pants. They're my go-to pants in the late season. These and then the Catalyst soft shell. But depending on what you're doing, you know, if you're hunting out west or you're sitting in a tree stand, the Uncompagre, no one knows how to pronounce it, but I, I pronounce it the Uncompagre. This is the Uncompagre 2.0 puffy jacket. This will go over the top of the furnace. And then along with that, I put on the Uncompagre puffy pants these things you put this and this on if i put this on it's like i'm in a very comfortable sleeping bag but you know out here in the west we're usually glassing for late season muleys or uh you know might have a late season elk tag sitting on a snowy windy ridge this is the system i like again i will have the catalyst soft shell pants underneath this and then i will have these in my pack pack when i go to sit down to glass i slide these on and it will keep me warm, keep me comfortable. But you can also use these for a tree stand. If you're hunting whitetails out in the Midwest or on the East Coast or even here on the West Coast, this and this is what basically all you need with a good layering system. And the great thing about all this stuff right now, like I said before, guys, all this stuff I just showed you is 40% off firstlight.com. So if you're looking into getting some First Light pieces for the first time, looking to add to your late season collection, or you know maybe you don't have a tag this year, but you're looking forward to the future, right now is the time to buy First Light, guys. Some of our favorite stuff is up to 40% off. And all this stuff I just showed you for the late season, go to firstlight.com, save some money, get you some warm gear. Hello everybody, welcome to my portion of the vlog and welcome to sunny Salt Lake City. I love when I can say that it is sunny here, though it is very chilly. So I got the beanie on, the hush hoodie, some of the older stuff because I gotta get my hands dirty. I just got back from my Utah limited entry late elk hunt. This was my fourth elk hunt of the season and I tagged out. So I got the bull here in the garage. I need to skin it. Um, remove the cape so I can get it mounted eventually. So I'm actually gonna do that now, walk you through some of the tips and tricks that I've learned over the years. By no means am I an expert taxidermist or a caper or skinner, but I, I definitely have learned a few things that I think will make it easier for those of you who have to do it in the field or at home if you don't have a taxidermist nearby. We're gonna get this thing propped up on the tailgate and show you this thing and then also show you how to skin it. If you guys follow us on social media, you've probably seen the bull. But for those of you who haven't, there's your first look. He is super cool. Really was the first bull in the spotting scope to give me a, to get me super excited and kind of give me that, yes, that's definitely a bull I want to go after. So giant unders, he's got a couple extras. I'll show you once I pull him out, get this thing on the tailgate for you guys. There he is, guys. My 2022 Utah Late Elk Hunt. There we go. Now we can show you guys a little bit better. So, as you guys know, we're dropping films every single Sunday. This hunt will be up on our channel eventually. I shot him on the fifth day of a nine day hunt. And man, I'll tell you what, we saw a lot of great bulls. 
and passed on opportunities on some really, really nice bowls. A lot of typical six points out there. And for those of you who know me, you know I like extras, I like character, I like mass. And this bowl just had unders, extras, and honestly just a really pretty frame overall. So he's the one I decided to go after. We saw a couple bowls that I believe would score higher than this bowl and they would they would score higher because they had longer main beams and they were wider. This guy is pretty compact. Those of you who know elk, you can see his points are very tight. There's not a lot of space in between his points and his beams don't go far back. Um, but this one left antler is pretty dang solid. It's got the extras. It's got the devil's tine that added a couple inches. It's got what we called the kickstand. This added 10 and a half inches, bladed out royal. Overall, just a super sweet bull, but I'm gonna grab my knife and we're gonna get to cutting and show you guys how I get this thing started. He is caped all the way up till here and from here we're gonna make a Y incisions all the way to the base of the antler. I've got the hammer and the flat um, flathead screwdriver to pry around the burr. I'll show you that later. But I'm actually gonna start by um, cutting his gum line and actually peel his nose up quite a ways. I like to do that first and then I'll meet it halfway and then we'll do the eyes and the tear ducts which are very, very important. A lot of people cut those. So for now, we're gonna take the blade, run it across his gums, start peeling back And you slowly peel that back. Like I said, once you get it started, it really will come, start coming off. Okay, we've got the bottom started. It's starting to peel off really good. Um, I'm going to start on the top and uh, we'll check out this bull's ivories. I haven't even looked at them really. So I can probably go deeper, but I'm going to leave it right there and then I'll come down from the burrs. Like I said, you want to take your knife and create a Y. And you can see I've done that. I've cut to each burr all the way to the base and underneath it. So that's where this comes in handy. I'm not saying this is the only way to do it, but it's worked well for me. So a hammer and a flathead screwdriver. And this will allow you to get the screwdriver up and underneath that burr and just kind of tap around it. It allows you to get the perfect cut. So you can see I got the Y, I got this cut and started underneath the burr. But what you want to do is just take your flathead screwdriver right under the burr you can pretty much tap around it and kind of use it to pry against that see how i just used it like that i'm going to go up against the burr again you don't want to go too far because you don't want to puncture through the cape but that right there shows you just how good you get around the burr and then of course you got to run your knife through through this stuff got crows at the house they already know what's up so see you're just gonna run like a really sharp blade up towards the burr and you're basically just gonna walk that whole thing all the way around using that screwdriver edge a little bit of a hammer and then pulling it away here we go guys let me show you before and after so this side we did with the uh, hammer and the flathead. You can see how clean it is. Look at the skin all the way up to the burr. Super. Yeah. Hell yeah, bro. Yeah, thanks, dude. Right on, bro. <laughs> Appreciate it. So you can see how good of a job it does to get all the way underneath all the texture in the burr because you can see it through all this stuff. So that side's done. I'm gonna finish the other side, pull this cape off, slowly skin down. I'll uh, maybe show you guys the, the tear ducts, how deep you gotta get. But outside of that, we're just gonna peel it off, skin it just like you would a shoulder, 
just got to go nice and slow i definitely take my time because like i said i'm no expert we've got both burrs trimmed around turned out really really good um like i said it's probably not the only way to do that but it's always worked for me now we're, i'm to this eye this is the right eye and it's these tear ducts that people seem to really struggle with they get cut off a lot you can see how deep they go let me show you how i do that i'm gonna go really really slow to make sure we get the whole thing like i said earlier the more the merrier so i like to get as high as possible and as much as possible of that eye uh, again not a taxidermist so i don't know exactly what they use and what they don't but I figure the more i get the better there's kind of a lower lash eyelash type of thing too and what i like to do is create get that hole and pull on it really really hard and make sure i get behind that eyelash okay once you get to the bottom of the eye that's where you're really going to have to use the tip of the knife to really go up against the bone and again i like to use that hole to just pull away and i don't know if you can pull too hard but i like to pull really really hard and use the tip of that knife blade to get way under there really get down there i don't know if that angle is going to show it but really use that knife to get down and almost scrape that tear duct out okay you can see it's just about ready to peel out of there and it kind of will pull out when you're done that's how it should look right there guys hollow and clean you don't want to leave any of the hair the tear duct in there now we can uh, pull that back and just carry on okay the hard work is done let me show you the skull now that we got it off We've got the cape off and my dog well she's pretty interested in this thing there's a skull, clean, came through. I don't know if I did a good or bad job on that. I have to ask my taxidermist, but here's the cape. Got this off, got tons of the gums. Like I said, probably more than they need, but better safe than sorry. That's a job well done. So hopefully you guys are enjoying the uh, Sunday films. We're putting up a hunting film every Sunday. And uh, this one will be up in a few weeks, maybe three or four weeks, I'm not sure fun hunt and i'll tell you what those limited entry hunts compared to like a general season hunt you just see so many more elk so many more quality bulls a lot less people and uh, it's pretty fun i mean we saw some amazing bulls that i let walk and anyways ended up with this one but hopefully you guys learned a thing or two on caping it is pretty tough but if you're in a situation that you have to do it in the field on your own now you guys have a tip or two hopefully it's helpful let me know in the comments below what I could have done better. I'm always trying to learn. I'm sure there's people who are watching this that are a lot better than me, possibly some taxidermists, so let me know. All right, guys, before I close out my portion of the vlog, I'm gonna tell you about the Black Friday special. Hopefully you're not getting sick of the deals, but guys, this is the time to stock up on a lot of products that you guys love and use already. So let me tell you about Mount Ops. The whole Hush lineup is 50% off now through December 4th. So. When you use code HUSH, you'll get 50% off anything that is um, the HUSH Lemonade product. Just to refresh your memory, we got Play Shots, Yeti, Enduro, and Ignite all in the HUSH branded Lemonade. 50% off uh, plus free shipping when you use code HUSH. And then site-wide, they're having a sale 30% off on their other products. Some of my favorites are just different flavors of the Yeti pre-workout I use every day and the Magnum Protein that I use on my post-recovery shake every single day. I just add peanut butter, chocolate, almond, milk, and a banana, and that's my go-to. Like I mentioned, guys, it's that time of the year, so make sure you hop on Mountain Ops, make sure you check out First Light, Onyx, all the different deals and steals that we have with some of our great partners. Links are in the description box. But I had to let you guys know about the Black Friday deals. Hopefully you guys take advantage of those, get yourself some goodies, or maybe get some stuff for a gift. Anyways, hope you learned a thing or two on the skinning um, of my elk. Again, every Sunday our films are coming out, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. And until next time, guys, we'll see you on the next video. What's up, guys? Welcome back. Uh, we got another week's vlog here. It's Wednesday, which means we're doing the vlog, and then we are doing the teaser to the next video coming out on Sunday. 
Hope you guys are enjoying the process and uh, good to see everybody. I feel like it's been a couple weeks. I don't even, I've lost track of time anymore. For those that have asked, I'm still here, I'm around. Somebody's gotta keep the doors open and the lights on to run this thing that we do that is actually a business. Believe it or not, this is what we all do for full-time work. So there's five of us plus our families. It means there's uh, a lot of mouths to feed, a lot of work to be done. And uh, I kind of fall into that category of keeping the lights on, which includes, you know, like helping figure out the seasonings, dropping like new merchandise stuff for the giveaways, working with our partners, working on all of our website stuff, looking at planning out Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So there's a lot going on there. And uh, unfortunately that requires somebody to be around, work on a laptop, working with uh, the people that help make all that stuff come together. And most importantly, those people that make it all come together are you guys. So if we haven't thanked you for a while, just a little thank you to everybody that supported us. The giveaway was, was cool. We're super excited to announce the winner be uh, on the lookout. That's going to be coming very soon. We made a commitment to have a winner announced on or before the 30th of November. We did a little Instagram poll and a lot of folks were like, dude, drop it on Thanksgiving. So we, uh, we'll see what happens. Those not familiar with the giveaways and stuff, we don't touch any of the data, any of the stuff. We have a third party company. It's actually a law firm. They run everything. Uh, that way there is no funny business or any of that stuff. So once they send us the uh, spreadsheet with here is your winner and here are our, the alternatives in the event that the winner is not able to be contacted, that's when we're gonna make the announcement. We've never had a winner not pick up their phone. Another thing to clarify, guys, if you've noticed, the YouTube comments section is turned into just a giant spam bot and uh, a lot of people are getting fooled. We will never, ever, ever make a con comment about somebody winning something and text us or whatever. Like it's certainly, you know what's gonna lead to? They're gonna ask you for money. So it's a giant spam situation and YouTube unfortunately is not really doing a whole lot to curtail it. We try to go in and erase those comments when we see them, but man, they're everywhere now. So just know uh, if we're ever gonna announce a winner, it's gonna be, we're gonna call you on your cell phone that you've used to make a purchase on our website or have submitted in our data. The other thing is if we don't get a hold of you on that initial phone call, we're gonna text you on that same phone number and then email you, again, based on the email that you have used to either register, become a member of like our website and make it a purchase or as a part of the VIP text group. So keep that in mind, guys. Put your phones on. Uh, if you see a, a random number from Idaho or Utah, I don't know, maybe you wanna answer it, but keep in mind for that. I am packing up headed out for a late season mule deer hunt. I'm pretty excited about that. Got the truck more or less loaded, a few little, little things left to do, and I'm heading out. And, um, you know, just doing a few other things. I picked up this recently. Braden did a Euro mount for me on a bull from earlier this year. Ugh. All right, guys, so this is a bull from earlier in the year. It's an archery bull. He's super cool. His fronts are freaking great. You know, I would say the top end, isn't as awesome as it could be, but nonetheless, he got me excited. Uh, we're hoping to share this with you guys down the road here. We'll see how that kind of comes along in the scheduling stuff, but let me know in the comments what you think this bull scores. I'll give you another, another little look here. Did this on Instagram. We don't generally score many elk, but you know, it's fun just to kind of see what we're working with here. And uh, a lot of people were like, post a score. So I, very, I put a very unofficial tape on it. And next week's vlog, I'll let you guys know what I came up with. But either way, some really fantastic footage that Matt and Logan captured. And I'm excited to hopefully share it with you guys down the road. All right, uh, aside from that, we got a ton of Black Friday deals happening with a lot of our great partners. You'll hear a little bit more about that from some of the other guys, but First Light, Mountain Ops, Onyx, Vortex, our own stuff, plenty of great deals to be had. So if you're interested or you're looking to like buy somebody a gift or maybe kind of get your kit dialed, pretty solid time to do that. Uh, that's all I got from my end. I'll try to give you some updates on my hunt. None of the camera guys are going because it falls right on Thanksgiving. They've been working their tails off, so uh, they're gonna be enjoying time with their family. I'll take this little vlog camera 
get some digiscoping footage, maybe whip something together for next week's vlog or the week after. But until that point in time, we hope you have a fantastic Thanksgiving. Thank you guys for the continued support, and uh, we'll see you next week. Well, good morning, guys. It is uh, 6 a.m. Uh, the day before Thanksgiving. It is my little brother Jed's birthday. And today, what he wanted to do for his birthday is ice fish. So first ice today, we're going to a lake that we ice fish a little bit last year. So uh, hopefully the ice is safe enough to get out there. Word on the street yesterday was four inches, which is plenty safe, but uh, it's snowing a little bit. So the goal is to get out there, fish for a couple hours, and then come back. I have to edit, and Jed has to go to work as well. So we're going to be off the ice by about 8.30 or 9. So two, three-hour trip. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you can see what we're standing on. That's first ice, baby. 2022-2023 season. And uh, we're heading out to one of my favorite spots right now. But we're going to spot our way out there. Rumor is four to five inches. The whole lake's not capped. Just the start of it over here. So we're going to spot our way out. Roll of thumb. If you don't break through in two to three hard hits, you're safe to walk. So we got a light sled today. Three dudes. We all got our spikes, floating suits. So we're being extra careful. But we're going to spot our way out to our spot. Let's go. go Are those footprints okay guys we are all set up we got the new live scope this is the Garmin LVS 62 XR transducer with the 93 SV monitor as you can see right there that little dot is my jig so we are just getting set up here um, something about this spot is these fish are extremely smart they're big brown trout and uh, they're not stupid so you're lucky to catch one or two of these things but when you catch one it's pretty good we're in this river channel so it's actually three feet deep about five feet to our right and three feet deep about 10 feet to our left and uh, right in the middle it's about 10 feet so we're just sitting here fishing this river channel we just had one good mark a minute ago come through so uh, fingers crossed we start to see some more fish well apparently I don't know how to run my little vlog camera it's been a minute since I've used this but uh, we ended up catching one rainbow trout and um, I had a kind of an outro for the video and some reason it didn't write to the card. So here I am back in my office. I'm just editing a new video for you guys. Super stoked for you guys to see this video. But if you guys have any content you would like to see, especially if you like ice fishing content, I plan on being out so many times this, this winter. So make sure you leave some comments below if you have any questions of my ice fishing setup or anything like that. I would love to interact with those fellow ice fishermen. But until until next time, we'll see you guys. Guys, hopefully you enjoyed this week's vlog. It's a Wednesday, so vlogs on Wednesdays, and hopefully you guys know on Sundays is our hunt premiere video. So this Sunday, coming up, is going to be a new hunt. What we've been doing the last couple weeks is at the end of the vlog on Wednesday, we put up the teaser for the following Sunday or the, this Sunday's hunt premiere. So without any more ado, roll the hunt teaser for this Sunday's video. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come to find out who gets to hunt mule deer with us this October with our good friends at RNK Hunting Company. And without further ado, let's find out who gets to hunt with us this fall. Look at this guy. What's up, guys? Yeah, we just wanted to plug you in, Caleb. We heard you're trying to start a fishing channel, so we were wondering if like, we could collaborate on some stuff moving forward this summer, like, Maybe a fishing trip or something. Um, yeah, I'm big time fisherman. Love fishing. <laughs> Caleb, I, I love fishing. I love gear fishing. But you want to know what's way cooler than uh, fishing? 
What's that? Chasing giant mule deer with the hush crew. Hey, you better not be messing with me right now. <laughs> Caleb, dude, you are the grand prize winner of no the ultimate mule deer hunt that we just did with our great friends at R&K Hunting Company. This whole entire crew, everybody on this call is going to be glassing their face off trying to find you, a mule deer buck of your lifetime. No and way. dude, your name was the one that was pulled out of <laughs> all the folks that entered to be the one lucky winner. This is amazing. Thank you guys so much. I'm so pumped. Get, get <laughs> you guys better and to, you know, spend time with yeah. the muleys, so... Opening day, dude? Opening day. Only so many of them. I'm excited because I have not had a chance to glass or hunt mule deer in a long time. Are they still going? Just doing some dude stuff. Just wrestling. Um, we've got the other guys on this other side of the big canyon. And they just got a hold of us and said they found a shooter buck. So, and hope he comes right to us. So, let's do it. Hell yeah! Finger guns. 